Minnesota Fighting Vikings general manager Prate Ricky Spielman met with the media jackals today, fed him a little red meat ahead of the draft. And of course, Spielman is famous for his non answer answers. He really should be a politician. And also, he threw in there, oh, uh, I, I can't wait to read more mock drafts. And I wonder what George Payton's going to be doing. <laughs> Uh, but we got some good pull quotes. The beat writers have been on this. And we're going to tell you what it probably actually means. Just trying to see through the lines of Rick speak. There we go. First up, Thomason. Vikings GM Rick Spielman said trading back and picking up some more draft capital is certainly an option. Says the Vikings haven't uh, been making a lot of active calls on trading up now. The latter part, uh, define a lot. Define a lot. Did you make one? Did you make two? He didn't say there was none. So maybe one or two calls. That's all you need. One call Howie Roseman at 12. One call Gettleman at 11. Go get your guy. And of course, he's always going to talk about trading down because Spielman trades down in every single draft. And just preparing all the fans to, hey, when you have zero seventh round picks and you end up with four, just be ready for it. Mm. A Vikings official account. Quote, we feel very confident if we do not move up or down in the draft, we're going to get a very good football player at 14 and code, which is good. Of course, which is just laying the groundwork. Hey, uh, we couldn't trade up. We couldn't get, get enough value to trade down. And we just took a guy at 14. And now we hope that he's good. And hopefully he's going to be that guy. But as we said, the Vikings problem is, isn't who they take at 14. It's who else is going to be on the board if they have to stick and pick. So if they take a guy like Darius, uh, maybe Micah Parsons there. If they take a guy like ABT, maybe Sertain or JC Horn is there. Maybe one of the quarterbacks falls past 14 and the Vikings have uh, pigeonholed themselves into needing the draft offensive line and they take Darisaw or Slater or ABT and Mac Jones goes to the Patriots or Trey Lance or whatever. But yeah, again, it isn't the lack of talent, it's the abundance of talent at 14. That's uh, the, it's not really a problem, it's just more of an issue. Also, Vikings, quote, to have the draft capital that we have gives us a lot of flexibility, hopefully, to move up in the draft, but we want to go do that. And the Vikings do have 10 friggin' picks, two-thirds, four-fourths, two-fifths, and they can move up. Hmm. He talks about that a little bit later on. Thomason, Vikings GM Rick Spielman said, if most of the players they like after the first round are looking like they might be gone by the end of the second round, that would increase the chance they trade into the second round. They currently don't have a second round pick due to the unique, the freaking Gakwe trade. So, yes, I, I always thought that the Vikings would get into the second round, not because of the mythical trading down in the first round, staying in the first and getting a second, but more likely packaging up those two thirds, those four fourths, and just making a move. Now, it doesn't have to be sky high. It doesn't have to be up into the top end of the second round. That might be a little bit too much uh, cost prohibitive. Where, But you can get in the middle of the second round, maybe towards the end, and still get an extremely good player who will be a nail driver for you week one. Also, Thomason, if there is a player on the defense we value higher than an offensive player, Rick Spielman said, they would go with that defensive player. Of course. Of course. Uh, again, he's just laying the groundwork and setting expectations for when the Vikings stick and pick and it's J.C. Horn when there's tier one offensive tackles on the board or it's Patrick Sertain and there's a quarterback on the board or Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle. Yeah, you know it. I know it. We all know it. Mike Zimmer, as long as he's in that draft room, he's going to be like, well, you know, the, the cornerbacks are looking pretty good this year. It, it, it's like he's talking about ripe peaches. Oh, the peaches are pretty good this year. Uh, he's always going to go cornerback. It, it's like asking Zimmer if he wants a cornerback is like asking a barber if you need a haircut. The answer is always yes. I'm going to be yeah. Uh, Chad Graff. Rick Spielman on the number 14 pick. We're not locked into one position. I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, again, that's also just laying the groundwork because the way the Vikings have operated this offseason, they let go of Reef. They didn't bring back Brett Jones. They didn't do anything in free agency. They traded for Mason Cole, who maybe might be the uh, new Brett Jones, but that's whatever. Um, so you would think that in the draft, you would go offensive line. And it's not so much reaching for a position of need. That's what's going to be there. Slater could be there. Darisaw could be there. AVT could be there at 14. If they trade down, that opens up a whole other avenue of uh, really good offensive line players. But, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Oh, the defender's there. Hmm. Chad Graff, the Vikings don't often trade up in the first round, but here's Rick Spielman on that potential this year. Quote, we've looked at scenarios of if a specific player is falling in the top 10, if we go up and get that player, we're going through what the potential cost would be. Now, Ideally, you would think it's Penny Sewell, uh, the best tackle in the draft, even though I love me some Slater, love me some Darisaw. But if he falls past seven, go get him. 
go get him. But of course, this is probably I'll talk about Patrick Sertain is a number four player in our board. And now we're going to move up to seven with the Lions and give them heaven and earth just to go get a cornerback. Even though Zimmer's track record in drafting cornerbacks as of late, eh, not so good. Not so good. Also, Chad Graff, Rick Spielman on offensive lineman in this draft. There's quality throughout the first three rounds. And, of course, this all adds up. Everything that he's saying is just getting and mentally preparing fans for uh, the Vikings going defense in round one. And then, hey, you know what? Round two. Maybe we'll trade up in the second. Maybe we'll just stick and pick in the third. 78-90. You know, those guards are looking pretty good. Maybe Quinn Maynards will be there. I don't know. Maybe Kendrick Green will be there. Maybe Ben Cleveland will be there. I don't know why we have a Southern draw all of a sudden. It's just... Ah. Spielman's a grifter, man. He's working us. And then lastly, uh, this is the one that got everyone in a kerfuffle. Thomason, Vikings GM Rick Spielman on taking a quarterback possibly in this draft. I will just say this, that there's no position that is off limits. And everyone lost their minds, man. It just means, oh, they're going after Kirk Cousins' replacement. Not really. It, it just, logically, it says, if you're a good talent evaluator and you're uh, out there just trying to improve your football team as opposed to cherry-pick positions of need, no position should be off the table. And the Vikings did break their streak of drafting non-first-round quarterbacks last year. Spielman hadn't done that since 2008, John David Booty. But they did that last year, Nate Stanley in seventh round. It's a start. It's a start. And maybe they do find insane value in the middle rounds. Maybe a guy like uh, Davis or Mond or Newman fall. Or maybe they take a flyer on Kyle Trask day three. Sure. That's the benefit of having 10 friggin' picks, especially in the meat of this draft. Third, fourth, fifth round. So... We'll see, man. Well, ideally, the Vikings somehow, some way, get a lot of offensive line talent in the building. I'm at peace if it isn't in the first round, but then they got to get aggressive, especially at the top end of day two, into the second round, get those top tier guys that are going to fall out of the first round, guys that can start right away, almost plug and play dudes. They'll come in and compete and potentially suture up this offensive line because as the offensive line goes, so goes the offense. The defense will be fine. The defense will be perfectly fine, bounce back from last year. But if the Vikings want to be contenders, they have to protect their cousins. They have to run the ball with Dalvin Cook and they have to get the Things going on offense. If they can have top five, top five, both on offense and defense. It's going to be a damn good football team. Woo. I'm excited, man. Bring on the draft. Let, let, let's see the mess that Spielman gets the Vikings into this year. But your thoughts, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most support that work. Post something the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.